year, um, one of the winners is the is the Groupon's founder, and Groupon just had one of the largest IPOs in the tech industry just a couple of months ago. Um, another winner is someone who's made graphene transistors to work, which is a significant breakthrough in the way that uh, semiconductor chips are manufactured. Um, another winner is the head of all the data management at Facebook, which is petabytes of data that they deal with. Uh, so I think just looking at the list, I'm simply humbled to be to be part of it. Um, I'm glad that uh, I've been given an award for all the work that I've done in Pakistan, working in a Pakistani university with Pakistani students and Pakistani entrepreneurs. And uh, this is sort of the first time they've recognized a Pakistani, and I'm glad that they've recognized me for the work that I've done in Pakistan. Now, Mr. Saif, for our viewers, could you briefly highlight your research that has uh, won, uh, won you this recognition? Uh, there, there are a few things that I think they took into consideration. It's a fairly long, out, long drawn process, by the way. They take around six months of evaluations and, and, and seek many reference letters and have a very large judges panel that goes through this and then sifts out the ones that they think will have the huge impact uh, that they expect sort of, you know, global innovators to have. Uh, the one that uh, that stuck out for me, I guess, is uh, is a peer-to-peer -peer network called Bitmate, uh, which enables uh, people in the developing world to sort of pool their unused bandwidth, to donate bandwidth to each other temporarily, uh, to download things much faster than they ordinarily would on dial-up connections. Uh, so this sort of basically enables uh, people with slightly higher bandwidth, for instance, a cable connection or a DSL connection, to sort of momentarily donate their bandwidth to lower bandwidth uh, cohorts within the same country so they can download things much faster. And we basically leverage a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, to enable the downloads to happen. Uh, using a technology, the, uh, the download speed almost doubles. Uh, and, and that's sort of, uh, and, and that's pretty interesting uh, given that uh, we basically use the existing bandwidths of, of low bandwidth users to sort of pool them and, and enhance the bandwidth. Um, uh, we released the software in February. It got a fair amount of press. Uh, it made it all the way to New York Times. And uh, within the last few months, we've had more than 30,000 users from around 173 countries. So that's sort of uh, technology that has had user traction. A lot of people are already using it. And it is now beginning to also find use in very popular BitTorrent type networks uh, where some of the design principles can be easily replicated and, you know, sort of the existing networks that are fairly large. So that's one of the things that... Uh, uh, that I think I, uh, they, they mentioned in the recognition. The other thing is a very local technology called SMS All, which is like a mailing list except over SMS. So it sort of enables uh, groups of people to communicate with each other by making groups on SMS and then be able to you know, send messages to a whole group and the replies also go to the whole group. So think of this as something that's very similar to a mailing list except that doesn't require a computer. It works simply on a cell phone uh, using SMS, which all cell phones support. Uh, we started this in 2008 as a small university project at LAMS just to be able to coordinate our classes and announce quizzes to students and, and schedule changes and so on. And it has virally grown ever since. It's been used for all sorts of things. It's been used to organize political protests. It was used in the lawyer's long march uh, for the restoration of uh, uh, judiciary. It's used for running blood donation drives. It's used by students to coordinate their activities. It's used by political parties uh, to connect with their political workers. It's used by organizations to coordinate tasks for their workers, for to talk to their sales forces and so on. So this has grown really large and it's used by close to 2.5 million people. And to date, we have sent more than 4 billion SMS. So I'm sort of, I'm surprised the kind of market traction it's had, it's a, it started out as a very simple piece of technology. It's not simple anymore because it has to support a fairly large scale. Uh, but the utility is, is, is incredible. It solves a real simple problem. Uh, people don't, who don't have computers don't have access to mailing lists. There's no way for them to connect to other like-minded people. And the simple technology lets you discover other people with similar interests and be able to connect with them in a social network of sorts, except that it works over SMS. Mr. Saif, lastly, what message would you like to give to aspiring innovators in the field of technology? I think one, one important message is that, uh, yes, you can do it in Pakistan. Uh, I am a pretty much a middle of a pack guy. I've seen much more brilliant people in Pakistan. So if I can, just about everyone else can in Pakistan. It's just a matter of putting your head down 
and you know knuckling it knuckling yourself down and slugging it out in the ring you have to you know sort of believe in yourself and put in the hours and it will happen so this myth that you can't do world class research or you can't have uh, entrepreneurial ventures coming out of pakistan is a myth uh there is no reality to this yes we have an electricity problem yes we have political instability but you know india has the same as well and they have done so well over the years i think the thing to do is for individuals to take charge of this and to you know try and make their own uh, a difference and i think collectively we can bring about a huge change